welcome to Oddities, Authors, and Stories. I'm your host, Terry, and today we're going to be talking about Roald Dahl. I first want to say thank you to our uh, researcher, Miss Jessica Brown, here at the library. She does a fabulous job, and we appreciate that. Uh, we also want to put a disclaimer out there that the opinions and views that we express in this story do not represent the library or the staff in any way. Having said all that, let's talk about Roald Dahl, the pilot, writer, soldier, and spy. Most are familiar with British author Roald Dahl through his children's books. From Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to Matilda, his eccentric imagination has an impact on children around the world. Though he didn't start writing until much later in his life, in fact, he was going to war before he even started writing children's literature. Britain got involved in World War II several years before the United States got involved, as the U.S. considered itself isolationists after the Great Depression and losses of World War I. In 1939, Dahl enlisted in the Royal Air Force, the RAF, at the age of 23. He was assigned to the No. 80 Squadron and was flying the soon-to-be obsolete Gladiators. Some in his unit considered him too tall to fly, as he was over six feet tall. But he managed to squeeze his frame into the cockpit, which earned him the nickname Lofty. During one run in the Libyan desert, he crash-landed and sustained severe head and back injuries. He spent six months recovering. By the time he finished recuperating, the squadron were then given Hawker Hurricanes to counter the Nazi Junkers Ju-88 bombers. Dahl's squadron took part in the 1941 Battle of Athens before crippling headaches and blackouts that were a result of his past injuries that he sustained in North Africa deemed him unfit to fly. In 1942, Dahl was assigned by the British Embassy to act as an assistant air attaché, which is a fancy word for spy. While the United States was considered an ally to Great Britain during World War II, the isolationist views of then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt and a decent number of its civilians rubbed the Brits the wrong way. Even after the bombing of Pearl Harbor led to the United States joining the war, some in the British government felt that the U.S. still couldn't be trusted and they needed to keep tabs on their plans even after the war was over. Dahl had a James Bond-like charm to him during his time as a spy, he had dinner not just with Roosevelt and the First Lady, but other influential politicians in the United States government, including Roosevelt's successor, Harry Truman, whom he played poker with. He even played tennis with then Vice President Henry Wallace, all while passing along information to the British Embassy. While on assignment, he started writing his first children's book, The Gremlins, about the mischievous creatures that would uh, the RAF would blame it for their plane malfunctions. This was written for the Walt Disney Company, at the time when the studio wasn't the mega conglomerate that it is now, in conjunction with a feature-length cartoon that would ultimately never be made. Part of this was because Dahl was not very cooperative with the studio. When the book was published in 1943, Dahl gifted one of the first copies to the First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt who would read it to her grandchildren. After the war, Dahl would find his calling writing the children's books avid readers would be familiar with, starting with James and the Giant Peach, published in 1961. He also co-wrote screenplays for two Hollywood movies, the James Bond film You Only Live Twice and the musical Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, both adapted from novels by fellow Brit Ian Fleming who worked as a naval intelligence officer during World War II. He attempted to adapt his own Charlie and the Chocolate Factory into a screenplay, but was fired because he missed too many deadlines, though he still receives credit for it. He renounced the film adaptation that sports the name Willy Wonka and the Cho Chocolate Factory, feeling not only did it deviate too much from his source material, but it also focused too much on Gene Wilder's Wonka as opposed to Charlie, on which the story was really all about. Dahl died November 23, 1990, from a rare blood cancer. To this day, children still put flowers and toys on his grave in Buckinghamshire, England. 
So that's just a little bit about Roald Dahl, the pilot, the writer, the soldier, and the spy. Hope you learned something today. It was great to be with you. Thanks for letting me part, be part of your day. And we will see you next month on Oddities, Authors, and Stories. Bye. Thank you.